Hello, Bill the Artist here, back with the How to Draw lesson, and today we are doing Foxy. Now, this is one of the DS, the directing staff on SAS Who Dares Wins, Jason Carl Fox, and we are going to do each one of them, one at a time, in each day from here on in, and they will be in the How to Draw playlist. Now, this is going to be, these are the most recent drawings, drawing lessons. We have done Billie Eilish, we have done Snape, and we have done... Professor Albus Dumbledore from the first Harry Potter film. There is also Jude Law. This is Sir Richard Harris. He was only in the first Harry Potter film. Uh, and we've got the young Albus Dumbledore by Jude Law from Fantastic Beasts. So do check them out in the How to Draw playlists. Link uh, in the cards to certain playlists, like the How to Draw and the Harry Potter specific one. So do check that out. Please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when you drawing lessons are out and I'm going to be doing lots of subjects not just the portraits lots of other things as well they are coming soon I am loving encouraging and seeing the results do use the hashtag drawing with Billy and it's fantastic to see people sharing check out my social media it's just wonderful to see all of you doing what you are doing with your drawing during this rather interesting time but as you can see these these do have uh, this grid two centimeter grid now I've done that to make things as easy as possible to give you the basic techniques to show you how the underlying techniques are so simple to help you build your drawing and your confidence to where you can develop your skills now as you can see on this piece of paper we are back with the simple grid with this cross in the center and then the two lines check the banner the actual dimensions for this this is the 105 center line and then it's halfway on each of these points but again in the banner is the descriptions in the cards is a link to a video where i show you how to put this down and you actually see me doing this in real time and the two centimeter grid for the, the kind of more complex where i'm using the same techniques now this is what i'm going to call uh, my kind of daily doodle or daily drawing and i'm going to use this simpler grid and maybe even no grid at all just so you can see using shapes check out how to draw anything part one using shapes the bird a bee a flea a tree a horse a house or anything else including fox's portrait today so we are going to crack in and we are going to draw simple shapes so i have my trusty 2b pencil uh, that we are going to use now we have pretty simply a rather big triangle but with a flat top uh, for the top of Foxy's nose so what we want is just some pretty basic shapes so we've got a triangle here so there's Foxy's nose I want a rectangle here for his eye the same uh, on this side I'm just putting I'm just putting a rectangle I'm just putting these shapes in because it helps uh, get your proportions in and get your shape and your size of your subject down on your paper appropriately so there we have the kind of eye socket just that carried on that rectangle around so now if we come down right to the bottom what we want is <clears throat> so I've just put a mark in for where the bottom of his chin is we are now going to just put a mark in where his hairline meets the top of his forehead and again the same just a little mark on that center line where the top of his hair is and so now I'm just gonna draw over and you got like just a, a big rectangle so there's a rectangle for that part of his hair and then we've got a rectangle coming kind of diagonally That's kind of coming down there. I 
And I'm hoping to do this a lot quicker. Like I say, the other portrait lessons are two and a half to three hours because I'm doing I'm doing the whole lot. But this is just going to be a more quicker sketch, a bit like the original, the first uh, young Dumbledore sketch that I did for you quite a while ago. So now what we want is off this line, we've got a triangle for his hair. And then we've got a little rectangle there. And then basically it's like a capital D. You can see there you've got a capital D for the curve of his hair coming off the side. Now we also have a little triangle there for the hair that's just coming in and then curving around the top of his forehead. Now his ear, if we come down here with his ear, I'm just going to put a box in and I'm going to do the same on this side. So again you've got the centre line and you've got this section here and you can just kind of see where the shapes are and you just need to put the shapes in. So I am going to put another rectangle in. And that's quite a thin slither for his right ear. So that comes there. And then you've got a bit of a triangle. So I'm just putting a diagonal line across that rectangle that I've drawn. Bring his chin down, side of his chin. Same on that side. And then you've got a triangle for his jawline. That just comes across. And then again, the side, like the sideburn coming off off the side of his head for his hair, we've got a triangle that goes up. And then again, on this side, it goes right through that cross point. We want a rectangle, triangle there, and a rectangle for the hair on the side, and then you get that kick up that's going there. And we can add the details in presently. So again, we want another triangle here, and that's like we had on this side, the hair. We can see we've got the shapes just appearing and you're just blocking in Foxy's face. Now his mouth, I'm just putting a long thin rectangle in and just a curve underneath for his kind of bottom lip. But then we've got his beard, the top part, his moustache on his beard. And it's kind of in two parts, so I'm going to put a rectangle in there and then another rectangle there. And we've got a rectangle underneath his chin of shadow and then we can put the diagonal line in. And same on that side. Now here right on this line we've got this incredible cross between the highlight and the shadow where he's got the crease in his cheek and then the side crease of his mouth and his cheek going up to his nose. But again I'm just indicating some little boxes where these shadows are. And we've got the shadow is going to come up about there, coming up over his face. Just putting a little circle underneath his nose. Now we want a very simple shape coming down for Foxy's neck, right on the line, just kind of coming off. And then that curves around and then we just got this brilliant big U. You just got this big U coming down underneath. 
you, know, you can draw a box to give you your kind of reference point very lightly and then you can just sketch that line curving round for his shirt and then that curves and comes up now we can bring that across that's his shoulder line coming out and again the same here we've got a diagonal line going off to the edge for his shoulder there so there we have a very quick cubist uh, foxy drawn down now we're going to put some details in and start building up the drawing and getting the outline down so remember I'm using a piece of paper to uh, allow me to put my hand on and not smudge the drawing that I've already done so now we're going to come in where we've got these rectangles that we put in for Fox's eye and you can see how that comes over to this point and his eye has got a slight little curve down and within this rectangle we've got a curve over the top for his eye And then you've got a crease in the corner of his eye comes right down and then we want the bag under his eye curving round to meet the tear duct on this side then we've got the shape of his iris and his pupil right in that corner part and then his eyelid fold over the top a tiny little pinprick of light now I'm going to leave that little shape there bare I'm just going to fill in all of that shadow quickly and then we've got his tear duct into the corner crease comes right down past and then above we've got his eyebrow and we've got that little rectangle that we put in to the edge and it just curves so we've got more You know, like a triangle of dark now again I'm just indicating but going in the direction of his eyelashes so draw them so as they're more natural in that way and then the curve of his eyelashes come all the way around and then you've got a little bit of shadow right in that corner and then coming off underneath the back of his eye there and I'm filling in just a little bit but straight away you've got an eye really starting to look off the page at you so now we're going to put in Foxy's right eye and we kind of level with this eye we just want a slight curve coming around and then curve this kind of triangle so you've got that nice shape that his eyelids make around his eye T-duct in the corner little pinprick of light right in the center and then his pupil and iris quite dark 
we can darken that bit underneath and again shadow on the eyeball because it's completely in shade and then we want the fold above just comes up and then goes above the tear duct but it's above and very close coming down to this corner of his eye here and here you've got like a little Z of the folds of his skin on the edge so now we're going to come down and right on the center line we want to build up the line of where his moustache goes so that we can get the nose and his nostril in the right kind of place so here coming down from the tear duct you've got the side of his nose and that curves around again just remember that's like a kind of D shape just curving and then we want his nostril in and that's quite dark going on there and then you've got this simple U for the bottom of his nose that is curving right down underneath between his two nostrils and then the, his right nostril coming out over and it's a little bit lower than this one on this side than his left nostril I'm drawing that dark so you can really see it and then you've got this fantastic highlight here right on the side of his nose so we bring off the curve coming round and then that goes up and then we've got this highlight here with the corner of his nose going right up past the side of his eye and then we want to indicate where the shadow is going to be on that side and again the same just really indicate where the highlight is going all the way up now Again, here we've got our rectangle and we want to put in Foxy's eyebrow above and you've basically got a kind of triangle of dark so I'm just filling that in quickly and then the shape comes down the side and there already you've got Foxy's eyes just starting to look back out at us. Now we've got the eye coming underneath, his eye bag under his right eye. You've got a lot of shadow right in that corner. Now we're going to connect. ridge between his eyebrows at the top of his nose just those couple of creases that are on there now now we're going to put in his mouth again you see me swap my 2B pencil over this is because it's really low uh, but I use the pencil holder because it means you get more use out of your pencil <laughs> so that's why I kind of swapped the pencils I'd use the point on the other one and I'll sharpen it like I said I do have that rather groovy electric sharpener which is very very good so now we are going to indicate Foxy's moustache around the shapes that we kind of put in 
now we want to I say we've got that across the top and that's all going to be in shadow and we need the crease from his mouth coming down somebody's just kicked off with a chainsaw I don't know if you can hear that in the background but uh, again people are staying at home and doing all kinds of things so there may be some ambient noise. I do kind of close the window and it does get rather warm in my studio because uh, I'm in the loft. And in high summer, I do end up uh, like a turkey, uh, feeling like the Christmas turkey in the oven. But I do try and keep my window open and the ambient noise normally isn't as bad because most people are out at work or out at school when I'm doing these videos, but not anymore. So I am trying to keep the background noise to a minimum, but there may have been a chainsaw just. So now... We are going to get in Foxy's mouth. So we've got the bottom of his bottom lip that kind of just curves around. We've got the edge where we drew and that kind of comes around to the edge of the rectangle that we drew, the very thin one. Now we've got the centre line of his mouth. And that curves and just comes down a bit. And then it kind of levels out, comes across a bit. And then it just little wiggle there. And then it curves up to the corner. Now we want here his top lip very thin but just curves over the top comes down and joins and then you get that push up to the corner and then his top lip goes along curves up and then just curls down now I'm just filling in the shadow and I'm bringing his bottom lip line right the way to join up to the corner. Just quickly indicating where part of his beard is. So now we want the bottom of his jaw it comes around and we've got this highlighted part remember even the grid I draw these on darker so that you can see I'm drawing a lot of my lines a lot darker when you're doing your portraits you can draw these kind of lines on a lot lighter so now we want to bring the curve of Fox's jaw down and then up to the side where his ear is That curves in. And then we've got this shape coming off on this triangle that we drew, which is his hair to the back. And that curves down. And then we've got his ear above his eye so the top of his eye is where that ear is I just need to sharpen my pencil a little oh, I do love that electric pencil sharpening so now he's here we are curving following this triangle inside the rectangle that we put in. So you've got the bottom part of his lobe and then it just curves slightly going up and then you've got that final kink and curve at the top. And then you can see inside his ear you've got literally a highlighted C there. So there's the ear chainsaws going again if you can hear that in the background could be a grinder someone's having the roof done I think so 
bringing the line for his ear around a bit and then the highlight of that ear lobe is coming down the reason I've sharpened my pencil is just so as I get a nice crisp line coming down and then you've got V going up and then the hair goes out so I'm going to indicate that crease coming out from Foxy's eyes and then here we've got this shape that we bought up and it comes to the top of his ear comes down and that's like his beard coming down and we've got a darker shape coming it's going to be shadow and then just to the inside of the line we've got his hairline and then that goes up I say we've got that point that goes right through that cross center point then we've just got some nice points of hair that are sticking out to the side and again the same up at the top so just, I'm just following the flow of his hair and the direction just indicating where his hair is and there you can really see now Fox's face starting to lift off because we're getting the stronger outlines around the edge of the picture So following this curve at the outside, going up, and we've got the hairline at the top from here. You've got like a W, you can see a W, so you've got this line that's coming across, and you've got literally A W that forms his hairline to that top point there and then his hair curves down comes round to just by this line and then that comes off and then his sideburn comes down to this triangle that we drew right on your guideline here And then you, this D that we drew here, we can just indicate. So there, we're nearly completely got the outline down. So now we need to get Fox's ear in, his left ear. We need to just curve that, and you can see the top of it kind of matches the top of his eye. We've got this shape coming down here. We've got the rectangle, the, the line that we put in. So now we've got his bottom of his earlobe comes out. We've got a V at the bottom. Again, I'm using the paper, so like now my hand would be right in his face. Now I could rest my hand there but I'm just using the paper just because it's a lot quicker and this is what a lot of people do do with drawing and I do love kind of demystifying the drawing for you so bringing the ear down just following the curve now we've got the inside part of his earlobe so here you can see you've just got like a D, just a wonderful, great big capital D. That curves down and then you've just got a little square that's coming off down the bottom. 
and that's kind of all in shadow and then the crease to the back of his ear comes around goes up you just got that kind of teardrop shape and that goes all the way up and you've got part of Foxy's hair and jawline coming down and his beard on the side now just indicating with simple marks just a flex of Foxy's beard coming down off his chin because it's not a solid line because he's not obviously clean shaven so now we want to indicate where the side of his beard goes up and then we're going to fill that lot in in a moment and then we've got a couple of his crease lines coming off And then you can see there, like I say, the crease line coming round his chin, and then the side of his cheek. You've got a bit of shadow line going up there, and then we've got the beard continuing there. Again, I'm doing this really quickly, like much quicker sketch. I've just taken my time getting the original underlying lines down because that's your most important your foundation and it's the same you know if you've watched SAS who dares wins the training that they put the people in the foundation the mental stability that they try to get into people that it's their mental approach is the most important and this is one of the things I've had people who've been drawing not very long and I say to them look I've been doing this for over 40 years now and I am still learning, I am still practicing, I am still training to keep my skills up. And that's why doing drawings like this is so important. So again, here we've got a little shape, a highlighted shape and a shadow in between. And then we've got the bottom down here. So now we are rather close to getting it all down. We've got Foxy's neck, so I am coming down and his neckline comes across and it's above, like I say that line, that first one, I put it on the line, it's above the line. So I'm bringing his neck down, curving that across and then building up the shirt that line goes off and then we've got this curve and you can you can literally make a kind of dot to dot as it goes around but you just want to follow the shape around now I'm left-handed so I curve this kind of way whereas here you see me fighting against my own hand now I'm resting my hand on my my left hand on my right hand so that my hand isn't touching the paper and I can use the natural curve of my wrist to follow this whereas here I would have to use my shoulder to pivot it round so I'm going to go from this side and I'm going to pivot and I'm going to do the line in one sweep so I'm coming down his neck I'm looking at the reference and it comes down hits the shirt and then curves around and goes up now I am pivoting from my shoulder I got those construction lines there and that puts in all of that line in one go and that's like a you know, just a big U shape but I was doing that and I was pivoting from my shoulder not resting my hand on the paper so again that's just something that you can practice now again shoulder here right on the cross line his t-shirt in the background so I'm going to bring that over and that goes off but now I just need to indicate 
where the shadows are going to be down on his neck. He got the kind of shape going up from his Adam's apple and then a little bit of shape there. But there we have an outline down of Foxy. Now we're going to do some quick shading. Hope you're enjoying this. This is really good fun. Now, before we go any further, I am just going to sharpen my pencils again. So that's pretty good. Just going to sharpen the full 2B. And now we're going to get rid of these construction lines, the grid lines that were placed in. Again, I'm trying to hopefully demystify drawing for you guys and give you techniques that are historically tried and tested drawing techniques. You know, old masters, Michelangelo, and many, many others have used these drawing techniques. So I'm just going over it. where these large grid lines are. I'm using this large Mars plastic. See, and you can see picking up the pencil, so I'm just cleaning it on my jeans. Just try and get a clean edge. And I'm just trying to remove the lines around the edge a bit. I've also got a Mars plastic in a pan that means I can get a little bit more accurate and I can remove the lines. And it doesn't matter like these these other wiggly construction lines that you've put in. You know, if you raise some off now that doesn't matter because we are literally going to be shading in really quickly and recovering. the paper. Now there's one right in the centre of that ear, one up that hair, so just get rid of that. And again I've drawn those grid lines on really dark. So now I'm just going to brush off. You can use your hand but if you use your hand you will more than likely smudge. Now even this will smudge the pencil a little bit but not much. You can even use a, a vacuum you know just if you've got a handheld vacuum you could suck them off but that might grab the paper uh, if it's too powerful so you have to be careful but again just brush it off lightly and I've brushed it onto the paper that I've used to protect and then just put them in the bin. Uh, I do end up with quite a lot on the floor but that's just part and parcel of drawing. So now, there we really do have the full outline of Foxy. I hope you're enjoying this. We are now going to crack on and quickly fill in Foxy. So, what we need is my trusty 2B pencil and I am going to fill in really quickly the shapes. Now we've got a lot of the lines where we indicated where the shadows are, where the shading is on Fox's face. And so what I'm going to do is just very quickly, I'm just going to put a mid-tone in all the way over. Again, I'm aiming to do this, not like the Billy Eilish or those others, the Dumbledore or the Snape. I'm aiming to do this more as a sketch. A bit like the young Dumbledore that I did. So this has already been about 40 minutes, so I'm aiming for one to one and a half hours, not the two and a half to three hour video. And 
I'm not turning the pencil at all. So I'm leaving the paper here. We've got this highlight. So I'm going up and filling up in his nose all the way over. And then we've got a bit of shading coming down there. But already you can see we've got this great tone coming across. I nearly said canvas across the paper because uh, I do those oil paintings. Again, if you check out on YouTube, The Art of Billy, uh, and you check out my oil painting time lapses, you'll see things that take a month. Uh, a lot of detail, but that's the whole point. You've just got to build patience. And the training that these guys go through in the military is phenomenal. Just developing their skills over months and months and months. And that's exactly what you've got to do with drawing and painting. And you are learning all the time. So again, I'm filling this in all the way down. And then we've got down underneath his neck. And so far, all we've used is a 2B pencil. Now I've not turned the pencil at all. I've got a nice flat underside and that means I'm just filling in the tone really quickly, which is dead nice. Now again, his ear, I'm gently pressing on. My little finger is creating a bridge. So you can see there, I've got my little finger down and that's holding the pencil up and allowing me the freedom to fill in these little shape areas while at the same time being quite accurate. So now I'm just gently indicating. You can hear the dabs going on. Foxy's highlighted beard on this side. So again, we've already filled his face in and that's just become more solid. The tonal values are giving more three dimensionality to Fox's face. So again, now you can see I've moved the direction of my pencil and I am filling in this highlighted side of his hair, just little squiggles to fill in quickly the shapes, but going in the direction of the hair and then up into that darker area. Probably end up using a 4B for up here. But again, I'm now just indicating some more tone to the edge of his hair where the highlights are. And then it's obviously much darker around this side because the light's coming from here, creating shadow on the left-hand side of Fox's head. So now, I don't even have my little finger down. I am literally just hovering and I'm letting the pencil take the weight of my hand and that's giving me the directional control that I need. Filling in that shade quickly. I've twisted the pencil so I've got a sharper point again now. And that's giving me the nice wiggly bits of Fox's beard and hair on the side. Shadow under the bottom of his ear. Again you can see very very quickly how we're just building up that tone. So now I'm going to come over, this is all bare paper but we've obviously got the strongest highlight here and down this side. So I'm just gently filling in a lighter tone
on the side of his head where the flesh of his face is curving around and the highlight isn't pure bright so here we've got it coming down his cheek build that up again now down his neck here we've got a tone coming down and then we've got to increase it and build it up but there we've got a very very quick solid tone down now again just using a little bit of kitchen roll just found a uh, fold it over use a clean piece this is from the previous drawing that I did of Dumbledore so there's a little bit of pencil on again you can just lightly smudge the pencil a little bit and you even out a lot of the tone but you still keep the integrity of some of the pencil lines and I just like doing this it just kind of softens it when you're doing these quick sketches and if you don't and you haven't got a piece of tissue or kitchen roll with you but take some with you if you're out drawing from life and just use your finger or there are the smudging sticks that you can get like these paper ones again I'm just doing this as quickly as possible to develop your drawing skills so I need to sharpen my pencil again so now we're going to really increase the shadows so Fox's eye underneath his eye right in the corner remember if you squint you kind of see the shadow shapes so coming down his nose where this nostril is a crease on the side and then you've got the curve of his nose underneath And you've got a crease at the top of his nose and that comes around the side darker there darker above his eyebrow you've obviously got it's darker where his hair meets his hairline meets his skin around his forehead and the side of his face at the top now we've got this kind of we've got a few creases going up there we've got a darker passage of tone there and that kind of goes right the way across and then the side of his cheek you can see you're already getting more three-dimensionality building up and it's darker underneath his eye coming down over the top of his cheek off the side of his nose and this is all just using sketching cross hatching just going backwards and forwards filling in more and more just adding little by little remember how I say all the time it's easier to add tone than it is to take it away so we've got that bag going right the way onto the corner so now we can really increase now I'm resting my hand on my right hand 
dark part going down to Foxy's tear duct that comes right the way across and the dark under his eye and then the crease above just turning my pencil so I've got a sharper point that comes right the way across Can increase the corner and there Fox's eyes just really getting more definition if we do the same on this side we can curve his eye his eyelid on the top it's kind of flat where it goes into the dark and then curves right down underneath we've got that nice shape again because he's outside he's just kind of slightly squinting in the sunlight and that's really nice facial expression now we can bring that down to the tear duct right in the corner Increase the shadow and then the fold at the top. And now we can increase the shadow in the corner of his eyes and the bag coming down underneath, right in the nose in this corner. shadow coming under the bag of his eye right the way across now we can increase just in this little triangle that we drew at the beginning where his eyebrow is and then you've got and that's really giving his definition now around Foxy's eyes so what we need to do now is just indicate these little crease lines and his eyebrow right the way up and over So now we're going to bring down to his nose, the shadow on his nose and down the side of his cheeks. And that tone is all pretty similar there. We've just got his nostril in and we've got side from his, his nose down around the side of his mouth that comes round then we've got his moustache kind of comes right the way up and then over now if we do the same on this side over to the right hand side we've got this brilliant dark shadow in this crease on this side and we're just building up using shapes and shadows and tone so now I just need to sharpen my pencil again I 
that's the last time for this one and then we're on to a full pencil again oh I do love that electric pencil sharpening so now we are darkening up the line between Fox's upper and lower lip Got a little curve there And that goes right up into that corner and his top lip has got the shadow on his bottom lip is kind of more highlighted but obviously where the crease is you can just bring a bit of shadow out very gently bringing the shape, following the shape of his moustache down and round but following the shape of the hairs and bringing it down to where it is approximately above his upper lip and so now going to very quickly so we've got much darker using the side of the pencil got this brilliant dark bit right at the bottom of his jaw the shadow on this side and that dark can go all the way up and then we've got shape that's about there and then we've got this rectangle shape that's there and again the same going here but you've got so now I'm just filling in more of the tone and the shapes really quickly just to get all of these shadow lines in but again you can see now it's really helping to give a lot more form and shape to Fox's face so you've got this solid crease line in his cheek And that comes down and then you've got this highlight that kind of comes around so now I'm just I'm just putting lots of little squiggles in again in the kind of direction of his beard and again going up the side of his head I'm actually going to see if we can get away with just using a 2B pencil we might need a 4B pencil there's a lot of dark up there remember B is for black and the higher the number the softer it is and the blacker you will get quicker so got to increase the shade I've got the shape coming right the way down around the side of his face here I'm trying to leave some because you can see there's very strong highlights on but this is a as quick a sketch as I can possibly do and we're building that up I want the shade on the side of his face getting darker because of all of the white space that we've got especially with his hair that is not helping with putting the tones in but you can see now Fox's face is really really coming together increasing the shadow just on the side there a little bit more 
round underneath on the chin, underneath the bottom of his lip. Corner of his mouth, underneath his nose, his top lip. Right in the corner of his eyes. Again, I really like using pencil because it's the most basic tool that you can get. And one day we might get into doing some charcoal. But you've all got access to pencils. And so that's why I love sharing these techniques with you. It just helps, especially when you've got some time, like we all have lots of time now, to just while away and be creative. Learning, developing a skill. just filled in his face. I'm just going to fill in kind of tone on his ears a little bit more and then we've got a lot of tone coming down his neck. I'm not turning the pencil because I've got this lovely big flat side so now we've got that tone underneath his chin, that darker, bit of a darker line reflected highlight so we can leave that in. So again now I'm going to get the kitchen roll and I'm just pushing the pencil round where I've just put those darker shadows quickly. using the kitchen roll as a drawing tool. Pressing on a bit lighter. Right into the corner of his nose. Bags under his eyes. But there you've got some really, really lovely good tones working for you. I'm going to get a clean piece because I don't want all of that pencil push this up the sides and then we can get the dark in on his hair and then tweak a load of details. He's going to try and sharpen. Oh, one more go. That is literally it for that one. <clears throat> My 2B pencil. So that really is. That's at the end. I can't, that won't go into the pencil shopper anymore. But we are going to now quickly. In fact, I've sharpened that up. I'm going to because it is literally a soft pencil this is a 4b and it will fill in all of this area a lot quicker so kind of go square up above his ear i'm just holding the paper gently with my fingers at the bottom. I know I've got the tape on, but you can see the paper just kind of moving as I am filling this area in. Now, you get 4B, 5B, 3B, 6B, 7B, 8B, <clears throat> and some makes even do a 9B pencil. It just means they're softer and you get blacker and it's easier to get the, the blacker lines down. Now, here we've got this massive dark shadow, so I'm just really filling that in quickly. And again, the same up here. So we've got that W around top of his forehead line 
and then this massive dark shape but you can see even here I'm now starting to go in the same direction here it's all just kind of blended in but I'm now just starting to go in the same direction as Fox's hair and even though my hand is kind of covering his face while we're doing this that's quite quite a good thing not because we want to hide Fox's face but when I take my hand away you'll see how the dark hair frames up the image that we've got so now I've not pressed on as dark for the kind of spikes coming off and there you can see that's really really quickly brought Foxy together just sharpening the phobia a little bit again again this is quicker um, I was hoping to get this done in an hour might be an hour and a half uh, but I'm now using the side just down this diagonal line and leaving that highlighted bit and then again the same there And I was trying to try, trying to get this done in about an hour, uh, but it's just a quicker sketch. Whereas the others, like two and a half, three hours, I really go labour on the detail and just showing you the shading. And there is a basics how to draw anything part to the shading. And if you check that out, again, it's very very basic. But I just show you the simple shading techniques that you can use and utilise. Now that link is in the description. It's not in the cards down underneath the YouTube video so now I'm just indicating his hair again I'm just using the 4B pencil and now his t-shirt so I'm following the line that I drew just making that a little bit dark and you, you can see the dark it follows but I'm just going to fill that in quickly as I press on the paper and then obviously we've got more light coming around so you've got the edge of his collar of his t-shirt the hem sorry it's not really a collar it's a hemline isn't it and you can indicate that all the way around go over the shadow again I'm just doing that really quickly and it just fills in that line and that area now again on this side you've got a highlight so I'm just quickly filling in that shadow <laughs> now that's kind of a good general overall tone put in on the picture it's going to sharpen my 4B again now as I said we've now got that's looking pretty good we've now got a fairly good solid representation of a full face drawn in so now it's just a case of refining certain bits but it's it's just a case of being quick and I just want to go quickly so around the head and the hairline I'm increasing the shade again I'm using the side of the 4B pencil and 
and this is giving me a lovely soft beard edge to where his hair hairline joins the scalp and his skin of his forehead and down the side of his head so now I'm using my hand I'm not using the paper so as you can see as much of the drawing as you possibly can now I'm just using the point in fact I'm just going to carry on using the side a little bit I'm just going to blur that down that edge now I'm using the point and just drawing and indicating some quick little squiggles and then we've got some lovely dark there coming down on onto his ear and then we've got the shadow right in the center of his ear and his earlobe above his earlobe and then that goes up and we've got the dark coming down right to this crease at the back of his ear that comes down and that curves up now I'm going to crisp up the line to the very edge of his ear and it comes all the way down underneath and we've got a quite a dark shadow but again the ear itself got a lot of kind of tonal differences and just creases and shapes and just using the side of the pencil if you squint your eyes you can actually see them and build them up So there straight away you can see I've left areas of light showing and we don't want to put because there's no direct highlight we don't want to put a, a highlight erased mark there so now we're going to do the same coming around his eyebrow and we can really darken this triangle of his eyebrow and even using the point this part of his left eye going over and right down to the tear duct I'm still leaving that tiny little bit of kind of lighter paper for the highlight on his pupil and then the tear duct just kind of comes down that little bit now again we can increase the shadow just the soft like we've done around the edge you can see how now that goes up to his forehead and because you've got his hair in the dark of his hair it helps you to bring up these darker tones in these shapes across his skin so now we've got coming down across the front of his forehead we've got dark patch there and then coming to this crease to the above his right eye and his nose again you've got that lovely line there coming up and those from the top and the crease of his nose now here we've got that lovely crease going to the left from the right of his nose to the left hand side and again you've got another kind of line there again I'm just using the side of the pencil 
and increasing the tone quickly and you just cover lots of lovely area really really quickly again the edge of his nose going down to the crease to the side of his mouth and the shadow right underneath that nostril again the same on this side then we can just increase the shade in that nostril and then right underneath the curve at the bottom now we've got a bit of a highlight we've got a triangle of highlight here so off the top of his side of his nostril then going up his nose just indicating a little bit more shadow again we've got a shadow coming across his cheek going up underneath his eye and here we've got that shadow a little step of shadow that comes down and then a secondary crease in the bag under his left eye and there you can see you're just getting so much more lovely definition just by adding that little bit of tone the creases coming out of the side of his left eye down to the cheek so we're just pulling that tone over coming down and then increasing the shadow of the cheek Again, this dark crease. You've got another little line there. That's looking pretty good. Hope you enjoyed this. This is fantastic. And uh, like I say, it's it's just a way of doing the sketch quicker. than the kind of three hour lessons. I know this is going to be an hour to an hour and a half, but it's really worth it. And I want to do these freer sketches as well that help you develop your techniques and build your skills up from the grids. The more detailed grid. And again, that two centimeter grid, if you check out how to draw Olaf, that is in the description. That is a fantastic lesson and you show and you also see how people like John Constable and uh, used grids to in, in, enlarge a drawing onto a canvas in that lesson but you see how it's no different doing this than it is doing Olaf so now we've got this eye we've got this shadow coming down like this little S on the corner we need to increase the dark right in that corner so now I'm going to build up the shadow right underneath. We've got crease lines coming round. But I'm just going to indicate some more crease lines on this side. Bag under Fox's eye on the right hand side. That comes under, down and we can increase that shadow then we can curve that shadow by the side of his nose bring that down pressing on lightly and then we get a darker shadow in this corner that then comes off to down by his moustache again darker underneath where the bag comes around underneath his right eye and you just keep going backwards and forwards just slightly adding a little bit more tone and texture so now we want this this fantastic crease coming off here this is so lovely coming down his cheek and you've got it's filled with that lovely tone of that shadow and then there's one above it 
and then another one and a couple of smaller ones and the smile lines coming off the side and then those lines going up over his eyebrow and we can fill in a little bit more shade underneath that eyebrow then going up and just some simple quick cross hatching so here now we've got a line in Fox's forehead and in the shade they've kind of disappeared even though they do go over and it's just the highlight that's actually bringing them out on this side but you can just continue them over a little bit so I'm indicating the lines and then we can see we've got some just little creased shadows in there again that's just giving us a lot more definition on the front of Fox's forehead so we are really getting there now So now I'm just adding some lines on the top of his moustache and we've got some brilliant dark patches there right in that corner. I'm softening like I've done up here I'm softening around the corner of his mouth and then the line going all across his mouth to the other side and the same thing that needs to be darker and softer and again just indicating some darker patches in his moustache right over to this corner and then you've got those creases right on that side and we can just build up the shade a lot more down the side of his mouth we need that shade coming down to there again over his top lip underneath his moustache bringing the tone there's a little highlight across his lip that's left so we can leave that off it's darker in the crease in between his top lip and his nose right underneath that nostril the same on that side and then we need to increase the shadow on that side of his mouth and again the same just coming down and then right underneath his bottom lip we've got this square of tone and we can bring that out now you can see it's really really coming together And just quickly sketching and indicating hairs but again I'm doing this all with the 4B just because it's softer and it gets the tone down faster again up in his ear here using the side increasing the tone in his ear because you've got this kind of dark line next to the highlights and very lightly just filling in darkening down that area coming down over the cheek gently filling a bit more tone in on his lips now again right underneath his neck we've got this lovely you've got a, a shadow that comes down there and a bit of curve coming around there down by the side of his shirt right underneath his chin 
and then you've got that nice shadow line coming down and then just slightly kicking off. And I'm going right the way over just the cross hatch all the way and that just kind of helps blend it together. That little bit. So now I'm just increasing the darks. I'm going to rest in my hand so my hand is not on the paper on my right hand. And I'm twisting the pencil to get that sharper little pencil point right in the darks. And I'm using this side. Again I'm going to get a very clean part on the kitchen roll. Just smoothing softening the edge underneath his chin and his cheek around his hairline so now it's gone very very dark but I've I'm just pushing the pencil around very quickly. I'm pushing some of the pencil onto this side of his cheek and we can pull off and again because it's on the kitchen roll we can pull that off it's just softly dusted onto the surface and we can actually pull that off very, very easily. Now that's looking pretty good. So now to really help pull up, I'm going to use the putty rubber and you'll see. So there's a bit of a highlight on Fox's bottom lip, that side of his chin right on that centre part of his chin. Straight away you can see that's lifted off already. Some little flecks in his beard, right down this side. Now I've just cleaned up the side of his neck there. Again, I'm going to really accentuate up the side of his face. And we've got the side of his nose here we've got this really solid flash of highlight and then we need to just dab up the nose up the side to the top and above those creases And that's the thing with the putty rubber there, you can see straight away, there's just little highlights just pulled up because it's just pulled off on the creases because it's lifting a little bit. Now I'm pressing on and getting a solid line there. Going up into that highlight on his forehead right at the top. Now that's looking fantastic. Now I know you've waited for like more than an hour to do this, but this is the process. Just like the techniques that anybody learns in any skill, these guys in the military with what they do, it's, it's lots of practice and it all comes together at the end. So now I'm just pulling in some of those highlights in his hair. Again, I was hoping to get this done in an hour, but it's an hour quicker. It's, if this is an hour and a half, it's an hour quicker than, than Dumbledore and Snape and all those others. But this is, this is fantastic. So now I want to increase the highlights there on his cheek, coming down there, cleaning that off 
And doesn't that just light Fox's face up? That's fantastic. Top of his ear. Oh, the joy when you do it. I've been waiting to do this all through this drawing. And it just really pulls it together. Some highlights in his beard down here. Little spots. Again, on his top lip. Now his eye. We've got reflected highlights. I'm very gently dabbing in here. So the putty rubber is picking up the pencil. So I have to keep folding it in. And that's why your putty rubber goes great. It starts off a kind of cream colour. And uh, it just... You can do so much with a putty rubber. I highly recommend getting one or two or three and enjoying and uh, they are brilliant. So again, on this side, on his eye, I'm just pulling off round the creases underneath his eye and there you can see it's just got so much more life. Coming down his cheek, just dabbing side of his head. top of his ear just gently dabbing a little bit of highlight there smudge with my finger back highlight on the corner of his neck a little bit of reflected highlight on the side of his cheek here Ooh, just dropping the rubber and then the corner and inside those bits inside the bit in between his nose and that's just made his face absolutely lift off now I'm back in for the last time with this pet and this will go in the bin afterwards because it's running out so now you can I'm just adding lots of little wispy beard hairlines and you I mean you could leave it at this if you wanted to but it just gives a little bit more definition right into the corner filling up his moustache creases underneath that eye underneath his eye just needs a little bit more definition again the nose the tone round by the nose here just build that down a little bit Creases and the shadows around this eye. Some more wispy hairs. Darker ones here. Going up. Now, on the side of his cheek now. I'm just indicating these lines now because of this dark line that I've got down here I'm now going to try and remove it into the highlight and then I can just put some little wispy lines for his beard on the edge I need to just do the same here and that goes up and then 
got the same going up for his ear. I'm just pressing on ever so lightly, twisting the pencil. And getting indications of his whiskers in his beard. And we are nearly there. And this is now, we, we are literally uh, on the final detail of it. If you want to do a lot more detail, you can just spend the hours. Just put many, 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 many hours in. But this is pretty good. I'm really, really pleased with this. So I'm literally just adding some more definition as we go. Shade in his ear up on this corner. I can darken that down. Now again here we've got some highlighted whiskers on this side. Now I think this is where he's going a bit grey really. Now I'm the same, I've got grey hair appearing. After getting close to a half century it uh, affects us all. And uh, yes that thing where the hair on your chinny chin chin and your head starts getting grey and then white and all those kind of things it happens to you with age. Some people do it when they're younger and turn their hair silver but they do it for fashion reasons. Ours is age, wisdom and maturity I'm sure Foxy would agree. Anyway I'm now just adding some little dapple highlights in his beard in the shadow side and I just keep pinching the putty rubber till it's sharp and that allows me to put those little dappled highlights in quickly. Again, I've got the same on this side. Now there are some real balters on here. Now if you wanted like the really strong highlights, you can if you check out Avicii in the portraits playlist. Uh, I actually used paint because his hair had got such highlights and I just got some gouache uh, and just put some white paint in. So again, it's down to you. Just enjoy your drawing for pleasure. Just really enjoy it and I hope that you have enjoyed watching this. So now back with a 2B pencil And this is this is the, the fiddling and faffing stage. You, you really are, you know, you can you can play about loads, and that's the joy of drawing. But eventually, you have to go. Yep, yeah, that's it. I'm done. It's finished. It's complete. And. then you leave it. So, and you call it a completed drawing. But I'm just adding, again, just using my finger, just smudging that little bit in. That's fantastic. increase of shadow there. 2B pencil just knocking those up there oh, and I can increase a highlight down off that line. Just a couple of lines down. Some 
dapples in the whiskers then with my 4B really going to darken coming round and press it on really hard and then we've got a little bit stronger shadow coming down there on the edge of his neck I am really happy with that I hope you are I hope you've enjoyed the lesson just darkening that down but that's pretty much it and just adding those final darks up in this part in his hair and then I just need to add my signature so last time for this 2B pencil and we have Billy. So do like and subscribe for new lessons. I hope you've enjoyed that with doing Foxy. Click the bell to be notified when new lessons appear. I've really enjoyed doing that. It's been fantastic. I hope you have too. Do share your images on social media uh, with the hashtag Drawing with Billy because I am loving encouraging you guys during this interesting time that we're all in. Thanks so much for being with me with this drawing of Jason Carl Fox from SAS Who Dares Wins, and I'll see you in the next one. And it uh, will be Ollie Ollerton. Take care, Tedar.